How's it going, everybody? So we're back out in the shop, and in this episode, we are continuing the hidden tang build process. So us working on this knife right here. Now, I've been racking my brain here to try and figure out what the next steps are. So I went back and I watched a bunch of other uh, YouTubers that I'm friends with, and I follow their channels, they follow my channel, all that stuff, and a lot of them do hidden tang knives. And I just went back and I started watching some of the steps and processes to what they're doing. So what we're going to be focusing on in this episode is trying to set myself up for success on this. So I'm going to be modifying my plan just a little bit compared to what I was going to be doing. And I'll be telling y'all why as we start doing that process. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to start getting into this. And I've got a few things that I've got to do. Yeah, I'm just going to bring y'all along and, like I said, explain what we're doing in each step. So let's go ahead and let's get after it. So we're going to start things off with thinning our tang a little bit. Now, I'm not just thinning it to taper it or do anything like that. I've actually got a goal here. I'm going to end up putting a shelf, so like we have right here, this little ledge that has right here, right here. I'm going to put one down the side of the tang on both sides so that there's a shelf where the ricasso meets the tang and that way whenever I go to put my guard on here I know that everything's gonna meet up exactly where I want it to be and I got this idea from Dennis at Tyrell Knifeworks uh, I know a lot of y'all if y'all watch this y'all watch his channel as well and I went and watched one of his videos I think it was the the five steps to perfect tang fitment or something like that or perfect guard fitment and he was talking about that, doing that little shelf there, and I thought, well, I've got a really thick piece of steel here, so why don't I go ahead and do that? So I went ahead and scribed myself a couple of lines all the way down this, and I'm going to use the 2x72 to, to take up a good portion of that meat, and then we're going to go ahead and do the rest of it with a file, and we're going to make sure this is nice and square by hand and not on the belt, but... We're going to take some of this stuff off here so I don't have to sit there and file it the whole time. And we're using our scribe lines to just make sure we don't go too far or kick it off too far one direction or the other. So that's what we're going to start off with. Get this thinned out a little bit and then we're going to go to the vise and kind of uh, file in that little shelf. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to that point. But without further ado, let's start grinding. So what we need to do now is take and file down the rest of this little area right here that's blue and make it even with the ledge that's on the top and bottom of the tang. So we're going to go ahead and bring our file and just work it down. So now that I've gone through and thinned the tang just a little bit to create that ledge all the way around there, I wanted to go ahead and see how centered this was. So I'm going to take and put this on something flat, which this work rest is, and I'm going to hold down on the area that I know is already true, and I'm just going to drag this scribe down it. And 
and that's going to give me some scrub lines right there. You can barely see them, but they're there. There you go. And that way we can actually see if we need to take a little bit more off one side or the other. We're actually pretty dead on right now. I need to take a little bit off the bottom right here. The, the top is fine. We need to take a little bit off of this area on this side right here. And the reason why, again, I held it flat here is because this is straight. You want to make sure the tang is straight to the, the flats right here. So that's why I've got to take a little bit off this back side to make it to where in the end the tang is in line with the blade. And you might be wondering, Eric, why did you really thin this out? Did you thin it out too much? Did you make a weak point right here? Well, this step, I had to exaggerate it just a little bit. It's even on both sides, but I had to exaggerate it just a little bit because I'm going to be bringing the bevels up here and I am going to be sanding this area and thinning this out just a little bit. So it's not going to be this thick in the end. So I needed to put a little bit of more lip on here just to be able to compensate for that sanding. So now we need to do take that little bit off here and then go to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and drill a hole in the tang here. I'm going to end up peening a piece of brass inside here so that after the heat treat, I can actually still be able to drill through a certain area and not be trying to fight through this uh, hardened tang. And I'm going to explain this in a little more detail in the outro, but that's what we're doing right now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this one up right here. Now, <laughs> some of y'all might be thinking that I really just watch Eric only focus on the tang for his hidden tang, the whole entire episode based on that. <laughs> yup. <laughs> now, when it boils down to it, there was a lot that went into me even doing this episode. I spent, you know, I've explained this a bunch of different times. Whenever I'm releasing episodes, I work on them and then release them. So the Friday episode, that is Tuesday night, and then Wednesday, Thursday night, and then I release it Friday. The Sunday episodes are Friday night, Saturday night, release it Sunday morning. Now, I spent all Friday night watching video after video after video about guard fit up and hit and tang stuff and all of that just to figure out how I wanted to do mine. And then I came out into the shop today, which is Saturday, uh, to be able to do this process. And I started at about 4.30. It is right now 9.30. So I've spent five hours out here just to get to this point with the tang. And Really, that was just trying to set myself up for success for the next few steps that we got to do. So I'm going to kind of go over what I did on here and where I kind of got that information. So for one, I would say probably the most helpful video, again, is Dennis Tyrell's uh, from Tyrell Knife Works. His, uh, I'm going to leave a link for the video in the description below, uh, but that video that he talks about guard fitment and like the five steps for the best guard fitment, can't remember the exact title, but that was probably one of the most helpful things that I watched, which was absolutely awesome and I'm super happy that I watched it. Um, now, what I ended up doing was of course going with that ledge that's right here on both sides so that 
<laughs> more or less I could fudge my guard fitment just a little bit so if I did happen to make a mistake or something like that it was something that would be hidden <laughs> and the same thing goes with this brass pin that I pinned into the tang there it's gonna give me some leeway whenever I go to drill my hole for my handle and this is gonna be the, for the pinhole in the handle that's gonna keep everything locked together even though I will be epoxying and doing all that stuff that's gonna be the actual or extra mechanical you know bond there now I didn't want to try and drill through a hardened tang and risk messing something up and the glue up and all that and this was my best thing that I saw out of all the videos what to be able to kind of make it easier on myself you know this is my first time doing this and I want a really good outcome so I'm gonna do the things that are gonna make my life a little bit easier and I'm gonna follow those instructions that these people put on their channel just to make it easier on me and that's why we did the ledge here so that whenever I do my guard on here the this ledge is just gonna sit on top of the guard and it's gonna get a nice you know transition it's then no gaps all that type of stuff and at least that's the goal we'll see how it goes now and whenever I was thinking through all of this like I said I spent all Friday night just watching videos and trying to figure out how to set myself up for success because doing this process is all new to me and luckily there are a billion YouTube videos out there now is this a 100% how to do something like this no are there better how-to videos out there for doing stuff like this yeah there are they're the videos that I watch to do this all I'm trying to do is show y'all a way to be able to do this for the first time and hopefully have a pretty good successful setup so hopefully this is helpful <laughs> if you're a you know a knife maker that primarily makes hidden tank knives I'd like you know feedback in the comment section down below because that's only going to help me out guys in the next episode okay the next episode we're going to be doing the heat treat process for this and it's going to be something that i got to think through because i want to do a hamon on this and i heard that this 26 c3 takes a really good hamon so that's going to be the goal i'll get into more detail on the heat treat process and the hamon process and all that and uh, next Friday's video where we actually release for that so y'all be on the lookout for that guys that's the end of this one like I said give me feedback comment section down below if y'all would give this video a thumbs up share this video or one of my other videos subscribe to the channel at 25,000 subscribers we're gonna be doing a giveaway for a knife guys thank y'all for coming by thank y'all for spending your time with me y'all have an amazing night day week stay safe out there I'll catch y'all next time <music>